um, the, the, the Congress comprises of uh, um, um, number one is a time to come and sit um, to seek the face of God in prayer, in intercession, in, uh, in, 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 in worshiping together. And also when we come together, there is the grace of the word. God comes to minister to us through his servants. God comes and minister to us through his servant. And um, um, also it's a time of connecting, you know, spiritual connectivity with the brethren that you have not seen for one year. It's sometimes it's a wonderful hugging one another, encouraging one another. And uh, some you have met, not met for one year and uh, you are meeting and uh, talking about uh, the works of God. So when you come to the Congress, sometimes you feel, oh, I've, life has not been good with me. But when you come and hear testimonies, then your life, you know, blows out. Yes, yeah. Uh, there are many reasons um, why um, we should come to this Congress or come together. And uh, Acts of the Apostles, you know, chapter 4. And when they had, that is verse 31, and when they had uh, prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they, and they spoke the word of God boldly. Now, this is a, a con, sort of a convention. When they came together, the disciples came together and prayed together. The thing is, when they came together and prayed together, the Bible says the result is that um, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to let you know that um, during convention, there is a great move of God in a mighty way than when we are in our individual churches. And uh, we receive a divine power to be able to move ahead, to move ahead to the next phase. Because during the convention, we also receive uh, a lot of prophetic word through the teachings and through the uh, uh, spiritual interpretation. And um, the other thing is that um, um, apart from the interaction that we have between one another, um, is that uh, we receive the grace to move on boldly to the next phase. We receive uh, that, that sort of uh, spiritual energy to move boldly. The Bible says from there they spoke uh, boldly. The other thing is that um, um, during the convention you have a lot of time for praying together. One of the things I want to speak about the convention at MISP or the prayer congress is that it's a time of engaging with God for a week. People come, they camp at Mispa, they live at Mispa, and at Mispa, from Monday, the altar keeps on burning 24-7. So the mechanism is it, yes, there is preaching, but also after the preaching, the worshippers takes up. There is worship, even at night. Every two hours, we have a team that is coming. We call them watches. So what I have seen is that uh, many people have come to Mispa and uh, um, they have uh, received uh, um, an impartation uh, in prayer. And uh, the other thing I have seen in Mispa is people being released into their calling. It's just like Acts of the Apostle chapter 13. The, the church in Antioch was meeting daily. It was like a continuous convention, yes. <laughs> you know, for them. And Acts chapter 13, the Bible says, verse 2, when that was going on, that is worshiping God and, uh, you know, you know, sharing the word and the prophetic, then the Holy Spirit said, um, separate for me Paul and Barnabas for the work that I have assigned them. So it's a time for the Holy Spirit to release us into our divine assignment. I have seen people from the Congress moving out to become pastors, to be evangelists. I have seen uh, people moving from the Congress with uh, a lot of power, spiritual power, to go and do the work of the ministry more powerfully. And uh, of course, during the Congress, the messages that are coming, there will be messages of encouragement, okay? Um, you know, the Holy Spirit will release messages of encouragement, you know? And uh, also when we come together, we give the Holy Spirit time to release prophecies. I've just said act of the apostles. Because of the meeting of the apostles at Antioch, the Holy Spirit started ministering to them. 
So during this Congress, whenever we have Congress, there is the Holy Spirit comes to minister to, to people. You know, um, I want to say this with a lot of respect that sometimes we are so busy with our church programs. We are so busy with our church program that we don't give the Holy Spirit time to minister to us because we are in a hurry. Yeah. You know, we are in a hurry. But during convention, you're not going home. It's, about six days, seven <laughs> it's a whole day and night. <laughs> One of the things I want to assure you when you come to the Congress, yes. your sleep will go away. Yeah, well, that is <laughs> we are so praising we... God, yeah. worshiping God. Every hour at Mizpah, yeah. it is a time of worshiping God. And so you find that uh, um, there is a lot of revival. In, people are revived individually and also the, your church is revived. But I just, I don't want to forget this. When you come to this convention and you see the move of God, okay, in the men of God, those who have gone ahead of you, you get stirred up to keep, to keep, to keep moving. And, but other people, as I said, they get a very divine impartation. And uh, I have heard people give testimony. They have come to the Congress and they, they, when they hear me preach and I pray for the people, when they go home, they find themselves preaching the same, having the same revelation <laughs> and uh, praying wow. the same and God, I mean, manifesting himself in the same manner. I remember when, uh, like, uh, we had a small convention we called Margaret Wangare, who is coming. The servant of God, Bishop Margaret Mary from Banana. Yes. And don't miss this time. Don't miss, don't miss this time. Yes. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, she'll yes. be here at the end of the Congress. She'll be here during the Congress, but those are special days when she shall be praying for people, ministering, be impartation. Yes. The church would never be the same again. The church would never be the same again. And we have people like uh, um, Subi, yes. I mean Apostle yes. Subi. Yes. I tell you, the anointing for nations will be released through this man of God. Hallelujah. And don't forget, the prophet Monique will be there. It will be powerful. So during convention, there is a, a, a great impartation. That's what I wanted to say. And um, um, what I believe is that um, when we spend more time in the presence of God, continuous quality time, we, we give God time to minister to us. So during the conference, we are not going home. We live here yeah, at yeah. Mispa. <laughs> if you don't get a place to sleep, yeah. we sleep in the hall. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> just come with your sleeping bag. Yes. <laughs> and in the evening, you can just put yourself in and you sleep in the presence of God. <laughs> that will be beautiful. <laughs> it will be very beautiful. Yes. I've spent a lot of nights, many times in the presence of God in wow. the sanctuary. And uh, okay, I'm not praying, but when I hear other people praying, I hear the worship. <laughs> I mean, I just feel I'm floating in the yeah. spiritual realm. Yeah. It's a very wonderful atmosphere. Yes. Sometimes I'm maybe in my room and uh, the moment I hear the sound of worship, yeah. my spirit jacks. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. 